You want to differentiate yourself from people? Make sure they know how you feel. Emotions drive us as human beings. If you're attentive to how they affect you both collectively and individually, your ability to succeed increases dramatically. I would say one of the most important human emotions is gratitude. 15 years in the NFL, there's two types of strengths. There's physical and there's emotional. But it's the emotional side of things, how you deal with people, how you deal with relationships, that makes all the difference in the world. And leadership comes in all forms. Create a good memory. Do something for somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NFL Pro Bowler, color commentator for the Kansas City Chiefs Radio Network and proud gorilla, Mr. Kendall Gammon. Wow. That's great. That's, I think there's probably a rule in all this that you should never follow students. No, no. Gosh. Oh, nice. Isn't that great? They're what drives everything. It wasn't that long ago you were a student here. It was not. You're exactly right. It was not long ago at all. 1991? Uh, was when I left, yes. And you left, and uh -huh. uh, left with the championship ring. I did, I was very fortunate. Exactly. That's pretty cool. And went on to play in a Super Bowl and a Pro Bowl. Yes, uh, I did, and, but as I got into the NFL, Super Bowls, to me, score's not important. Oh, really? No, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Uh, participation. But uh, just participation. Yes, sure, sure, sure. You notice I say he played in the Super Bowl. So, you know, that, that video is, Chris and I talked about it earlier, that video is, it's just, slick. Oh, it's slick. It is sizzling. We've never seen anything like it. It is so slick. And so, you know, we like balance. So what we did was we dug into the NFL archives, and we've got another video. <laughs> and, and we wanted to share it with everybody. It's Kendall Gammon, and your number... 83. 83. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see what it looks like. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's got a lot of time on their hands. You know, you, you told me before you got hit in the head a lot, but I wasn't is, kidding. This, was is, I? this is a different part of your body. This is um, more than a little bit oh, disturbing. Oh, mercy. That was broken oh. ribs. Oh. Now, let's, we've got some audio on this one. Buchanan. Got a couple of good blocks. <laughs> Down the sideline. 37-yard return. That was a broken Kendall leg. Made the tackle, and well, Kendall Gammon, the they talk tight about end, this. just went down like he was shot. Well, Buchanan makes a move on him. We've got two Kansas City guys down. Oh, my. But Buchanan makes Ooh. a move on Kendall Gammon, number 83. And when he makes his move, Gannon, watch over on the left-hand side. See the guy at the top? Watch him. He's going to make a move, and he just goes down. He tore his knee. That is Kendall Gammon, the long snapper for Kansas City, and he was hurt on this play. You'll see it on the uh, replay right after the snap. They just actually run is over Is it good when you're highlighted like this all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Get wow. again. His um, own hits normally him not. I'm, a, I'm the player, and I haven't been able to hold this finish. He fell down a third time <laughs> as he was trying to hustle downfield to cover that kick. So it doesn't look any better if they play it a number of times, though. does it? No. <laughs> so um, there's there's more to this one. Now, now some of those, you just roll back. You're pretty good at that. I'm a gymnast, just kind yes. of rolling and kind of, <laughs> kind of diffusing the impact. That? But... Uh, but that one, that was painful. What happened there? That was actually when I came off the line, um, after I just snapped it, my, my right guard actually hit me in the right spot in the knee, or the wrong spot, as it were, and broke my leg at that point. Uh, we all know I'm not bright enough to understand some things going on, and I kept uh, going and <laughs> went down a couple different times, and as they said, it looked like I'd been shot. Yeah, it did. <laughs> It, it, it was odd that you fell just before you could have made contact to make the tackle. That's what, that's, that was... I was... I, I did... Tackles to me were showy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I, I described myself as a sheepdog. I would herd them to other people yeah. <laughs> and let them share in the you glory. Know, you know, that says something about you, because how long did you play in the NFL? I played 15 years. There, there you yeah. go. The yeah. average person plays how long? Uh, 3.1. There you go. You know, it's, it's interesting. That was in Houston. My very first game was in Houston at the Astrodome. That was the first time after that game. That was my last game. I'd played 218 straight at that one, that point in time. So kind of, kind of, wow. Yeah, so that you knew what you were doing to, to yeah, I guess. that's pretty cool. So, you know, uh, you think about the, the number of employees we have on campus, and, and we have a good idea what a lot of them do. Actually, I have no idea what some of them do. I probably shouldn't admit that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, but, but everybody has a role. Everybody contributes, and there's some really unique jobs around, but I don't know that there's any job on campus or any role on campus that's more unique than yours. Uh, how would you describe what you do and how you contribute to Pittsburgh State? Well, I, I think I have a lot of different jobs and I like that. Um, certainly, first and foremost, uh, I'm an ambassador to the university and I always felt like I was even before I, I came on as an official employee with my name maybe being a little bit more public because of what I did. But, you know, raising funds for facilities and scholarships, leading different projects, being on different uh, task force, uh, and really just in general uh, representing Pittsburgh State the best way I know how. So I noticed that the video that we kind of teased you about uh, really talks about your, your speaking work yes. that you do. And I know when you do that, you're always introduced as a gorilla. You relate to the time on the campus and what you learned here. But uh, how many people do you think over the last few years you've been in front of to, to do those kinds of things? Oh, wow. A uh, lot? Yeah, I mean, thousands, thousands actually, probably at this point in time, the last several years, you know, tens of thousands, yeah. de depending on when I'm speaking and then other things going on. And then when you think about the Chiefs uh, radio network uh, prior to halftime. Uh, <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of coverage does that have? What, well, what would you say? How do you guys rate that? Uh, well, we're the largest. We're, people may or may not be surprised to know we're the largest uh, radio network in the NFL. And we're the, we have the largest listenership and we have the largest amount of people who turn down the TV and listen uh, to the radio broadcast. It's obviously mm -hmm. because of Mitch, not yeah. because of me. Started long before that, but um, I mean, that's you know, in the millions each and every week, and, and I mean, I, I make no bones about it. I figure out a way to get Pittsburgh State Sure. And, and the word gorilla is said in most of my broadcasts. Right. So and I, right. I think that's something that's cool. Right. Yeah, and we appreciate that. That's good for us. Oh, I'm proud the, of it. Extends the brand. You know, there's a lot of similarities, it seems to me, between G Chiefs Nation, Gorilla Nation. There's a lot, of, a lot of overlap there. Colors work. You see people at our games with the colors. You see people at <laughs> yes. their games with our colors. And, uh, and the tailgating, I think the tailgating that was so successful at the Chiefs games, I think we've benefited from that. I don't think there's any, any doubt about that. As you think about what you learned in sports and, and what you learned in the NFL and, uh, and you think about our student athletes and what we're doing with our athletics program, there's lots to be learned from athletics. Would you, I mean, is that, was that oh. your feeling and what you've seen? Yeah, no question about it. I, I think uh, you learn to deal with authority. Uh, you learn to de uh, deal uh, with teammates. You, you learn uh, how to you know, really get on a schedule and be dedicated to something. I, I think I, when I speak to students, and even younger students, I always talk about the fact that uh, to me, sports is no more or less important than a lot of disciplines because it's a discipline in and of itself of, of how you conduct yourself on an, uh, on an everyday uh, manner and, and really how you deal with people, the relationships you build with right. them. You know, sometimes I'll be at a game and, and we'll be down, well, the bowl game, our football bowl game. You know, guys, we were down 31-7 uh, to 7 just before the half, 31-14 the half, and, and I think about those kids didn't quit. Uh, somebody drew out some pretty nice plays at halftime, Coach, and we came back and won 48-31, not that I keep track of all the scores. <laughs> but uh, pretty impressive. So some days I think about that when things don't go well, for me or for us, and I think, well, am I gonna not show up for the second half? And I find inspiration in that, that our kids find a way to come back and play and, and not quit. And I think you can learn that in sports. Yeah, I think it's well said. I think you can draw back. I think a lot of us draw back on, on different experiences in college, sure. uh, some of the best times of our lives. Sure. And uh, uh, that helps us get through uh, difficult times in the future, I believe. You know, that's what I love about Pittsburgh State and what I do is the fact that I'm able to reconnect people some people that are that are giving monetarily some that aren't depends right, on right. where they're at in their life 
but the one thing that I always get is, is thank you for reconnecting me with the university. That's what makes me feel good. And we've had a great experience with uh, Bob Lepke, yeah. uh, who helped us with Just spoke the, with him last night, as a matter of fact. He helped us, obviously, with the strength conditioning equipment. And uh, he's not finished supporting Pittsburgh State. No. He loves what he, the reconnection that really you founded. You, you found Bob and really made a connection with him. And, and I've gotten to know him, and Jim Johnson has, and Tim. Back I'm glad he didn't see that video before he and I. Yeah, he'll, we'll, he'll want <laughs> to see talking. this because we mentioned him. Well, he'll, he'll want to see it. He's going to have but, the pride out of my hand. But that is a great example, though, of how athletics, fundraising, there's, there's, it really all goes together in so many ways, doesn't it, at Pittsburgh State? Well, there's no question about it. We, you know, the study's almost 9 out of 10 people who give to athletics give to something else. And you know, just like yesterday, I was at a gorilla gathering uh, with Dr. Paul Grimes, right, you know, right. talking about the, uh, the, the Kell School and, right. and what we're trying to do there. And I get as big a charge out of that as I do athletics. And sure. I think a lot of people be surprised to know that really arts is, is my love. I was in the musical all four years in high school. So you're I love being up here, absolutely. Up here, yeah. I've been in Brigadoon. I mean, I, I had a kilt on dancing around wow, singing. No, so, yeah, I did. Exactly. We're going to look for that video. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so, so you, you suffer from what a lot of people suffer from in this part of the country, and that's uh, humility. You do. You're, you're a humble person. Uh, but I'm going to ask you questions. going to make you look at your shoes. you got loafers on. Uh, and that is, over the last few years, if you had to put a number on the dollars that you've really participated in, been in the middle of, bringing you to this campus, what would that number be? No, we, and I know you don't want to say it, but I'm asking you to say it. I mean, it's it's a fair amount. Um, I mean, I think I could safely say 15 million. That's a pretty good number. That's a pretty good number. And uh, and I've been around a lot of that, and and that's absolutely the truth. I mean, Kendall's really been right at the heart of these discussions, these conversations, the relationship building and the reinforcing and the nurturing of the relationships we have. And, and without him, those dollars wouldn't have come here. So I, I want to thank you. And, 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 and I know it's hard to talk about that, but it's, it's, it's real and it's important. I'm going to say one thing. I think a lot of people, you know, lump me in with sports, and I get that because of what I did for so long. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say, actually, one scholarship that I'm the most proud of is the scholarship itself. Uh, it was a, kind of the first of its kind that provided a full, it was, you know, six figures, had nothing to do with sports. Right, right. And to me, the, those folks, they thanked me for getting them reconnected yeah, and they yeah. thanked me for allowing them the chance to give back. And right. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to do that. We just yeah. have to find them. Absolutely. And put those opportunities in front of them yes. and, and then continue to nurture those relationships. Kathleen, I talked earlier today, Kathleen Flannery, I think we have five major gift officers, but we have you know, as many as 10 people all together working in develop, really seriously in development. Those funds are, those salaries are paid by the foundation, which is great. But people talk to us periodically about you know, the financial pressures. They say, well, we need more revenue. Well, this is an example of how that comes about and it takes an investment on our part, but we're certainly returning a lot of dollars to the campus as we do that. And I want to say thank you for that and your work in that area. And we're not done, you no. know that. So I've asked everybody about mentors. Mm -hmm. And I know you came through this place and you had some pretty special people that uh, worked with you and taught you. And who's, who would you cite? You know, it's interesting. It was, I, I say it was um, Dr. Tom Bryant. He was my advisor uh, back before I think he was even mm -hmm. a dean. Mm -hmm. And uh, so him, you know, becoming the, the president at a time, uh, it was nice to be able to come back through my, my, my years in the NFL after the season and have familiar faces and certainly that being mm -hmm. one of them and and he did a lot for me so yeah, yeah i would say that was one who definitely affected me yeah he doesn't let go of you either does he when no, he he's, uh, when he's mentored and taught you and when he sees you right now he'd probably put you in a headlock i mean he literally he might he doesn't yeah, let go absolutely. Of you, right? I mean, he's very he's just like is that he i know he loves you, he, he, about you. yeah he definitely cares I there's no doubt does. i know absolutely well that's great i don't have any more questions for you uh well, I mean, and you're probably getting ready to get me off the stage as soon as possible, but uh, <laughs> with uh, what we had, I think turnaround's fair play. You, you, you got a hold of that video somehow and made it. Um, I, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in the press. I ask questions, so we have questions, right? We do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I think I should so, be doing that. So Kendall's going to do good. that. So should we have like a locker room? Should I have the 
you know, the jersey on. The, you probably is should. That when you, isn't that where you interview people? It is, absolutely. But I think if you did, I think we'd all be more than a little bit surprised. So um, I don't know if hey, that's I what we want to do right the, now. I put on the total football uniform one day. Well, I, I have the photos to show, to prove it. Very nice. Yeah. We'll yeah. make a video of that. It, we, I, I think we have a video. <laughs> <laughs> Someday that video is going to show up. Well, we've got a few here, but right. I think the first right, one we're going to go with is, um, I mean, surely I need to come up with a few of my own. Uh, you saw the Chiefs uh, had a rough end to the season this year. Do you have any uh, quick fixes for that? <laughs> no. Okay. We will. Uh, next subject. Who's that? It's funny. Back, I get that. Who's that backup quarterback? Oh, yeah. he's got to be the savior, right? Absolutely. I mean, he's going to come in. Best person is always the next man. Yeah, you know, we had there. this all planned, Chris, that uh, we were going to be uh, headed to the Super Bowl this week. I know. Right? That well. was the whole deal. And then Kendall would be here, and it'd be all Chiefs Nation all week. But anyway, that's all right. Okay. No, I, I think I've got a good one. Okay. We, we've talked the NFL. For, for me, uh, you had four, I had four preseason games, and then I would have 16 regular season, and then hopefully um, have a postseason play after that. Uh, but, but for me as a player, then even, even as a broadcaster, came the offseason. I got a chance to recharge and, 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 and get back uh, in my groove and just kind of get things going again. When I look at you, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit closer than, than some, I, I see you have, in this day and age, you have a lot of challenges each and every day. One, how are you doing with all those? And then number two, how do you recharge? Yeah, that's a, that's, that, that's a qu I'll get back to that. The, the thing I worry about, and I, and I mean this, is everybody here is taking on a bigger load. So I know people, and, and I appreciate it. Dr. Olson, I had somebody stop us in the hallway and said, you know, I feel for you guys right now with what's going on. That was a very nice gesture on the part of one of our professors. Uh, I, and I get that, and I appreciate that comment, but everybody's taking on more. Everybody feels that, and I think Aaron mentioned the word uh, unsettled, and that, that, that unsettled and feeling of anxiety about not knowing what, what's going to happen. So I, at first I feel that for everybody. I really do, and I'm concerned about that, and I see Sherry Brogan's car uh, parked up at the Alumni Center more than it probably should be, and I see Sherry sitting over here because of the time that she puts in, and, and that's, she's not alone. Uh, Howard Smith gets here at 4.30 in the morning, of course he goes home at 10 in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and Howard, Howard just loves to have his name mentioned, so I say that. <laughs> but, but you know, really, long, long hours, and Howard, seriously, that people put in, so I, I worry about that for all. And, I, and I, I'm committed to this. If, if it was a job, it'd be one thing, but it's, for me, it's really mission work. It's my alma mater. I've grown up in this region. I want to see this region grow and do better. So, so I, I, I get a lot of my energy from, from the successes that we have. It's not as much fun as we face the financial challenges, but I still try to keep my eye on that, that more distant ball of, of where, where are we going to be? How do we make sure this place, is, this place continues to be viable, continues to serve people in the future? And it will. It's been here over 100 years. And, uh, and it's our job as stewards of this place at this time to keep that going. Uh, many of you know I recharge by exercising, by walking and being on the treadmill. And get on the treadmill and watch Chris Matthews. What could be more relaxing than that? Uh, you know, and so, so that, that really recharges me. Kathy and I get to step away a little bit periodically. And we try to carefully carve out those, those times to do that. And, uh, but I, I appreciate the folks who have reached out and said, you know, been encouraging and been supportive because we are all in this together and we, we only are going to find the best pathway through it together. But, but I appreciate you asking that question. Okay. We'll go to some that were uh, given today. At a cost of 4000 a year for insurance last year, then a 4% increase this year to 5280 uh, as a cost. Would you consider sending a delegation to Topeka to re renegotiate our price of insurance? Well, we don't have enough time for me to talk about how I feel about HealthQuest. <laughs> how many of you really like HealthQuest? <laughs> I mean, I, there you go. I, you know, the cost of, of the health insurance is one thing, and, and we're seeing that all over the country. Everybody's experiencing that. HealthQuest is a Kansas issue. And, and the folks who have been work around me closely, they know I've been pretty upset about the way HealthQuest is designed, the way Cerner put that whole system together, the reward system. I think it's got a lot of problems. And I've brought it to the attention of the Council of Presidents. I've brought it to the attention of the Board of Regents. 
Uh, we're, we're really, right now, we're, we're working on a little bit of legislation we think could help us. It's got a structural issue in terms of governance. And then you'll see us later this year really try to strategize and, and uh, conceptualize the concerns and, the, and a process to go forward. So we're on that, we're concerned about it. I, I do feel the, the, the concerns that everybody else has. And I didn't get my 50 points, I got 46. Just so irritated by that. We had a, a <laughs> hearing in Topeka last week where a state senator didn't get her points. So she drags the people in and kind of grills them for a while about it, about some of the kind of silliness that's in the system. So nobody on this campus designed it. I know the payroll and HR folks, they're trying to help us understand it. And I saw Taylor Gravett, new employee, he, he put out a newsletter the other day trying to help you know, guide us to the right information. I think that's a good thing, but it's a flawed, it's a flawed program. That's what I would argue. Uh, got to figure out how to work with it this year, but I hope in the next year we can make some progress and improve it. But sure. again, I got lots more to say about that. That was a pretty big lots question, more. actually. Yeah. Uh, this one, we'll take it down a little bit. Okay. Who was your favorite student? <laughs> Wait, seriously. Wait, Kendall, Kendall, who? who? I suppose I should say that's by John Botts. Yeah. <laughs> Man, do you work with Sean Nakarado? Because you seem to need a lot of attention. I don't know what's going on there. I will maybe take it down just even a little was, bit more. Was, did he put that in there, really? Uh, he, he did. Because <laughs> I really felt on the spot to answer it. <laughs> um, what socks do you have on? You know, this is going to really disappoint people. These are cotton fluffies. And I wasn't going to say anything. They're not, very, they're not very sexy. <laughs> but those are cotton fluffies. <clears throat> Eight ninety nine for a package of six. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the budget. Got another one? I have to pass on one because I'm a football player and I can't read it. Uh, but I'll get there in a minute. If flex time occurs, when would it be implemented? Well, I'm, I'm excited about that task force. I know today they launched a, a survey opportunity for people to provide some feedback. And uh, under the guidance of Mindy Kloniger, who's the chair of that, of that task force, and I'm anxious to see the kinds of ideas they come back with. I'm, I want to really have an open mind about, about it. Uh, I, I want to make sure we have opportunities to create community and create connections and make sure our working relationships are, you know, work well and are as they need to be, have a, the right environment. But I'm very anxious to see what, what they come up with. I think we've learned a lot from the summer. The summer school group, that committee put together a great way to flex our time. So uh, I think it would most likely be fall, but it might even be as late as January. I, I don't know. That, and, and no promises in terms of what, what, this, what will come about, but I think we've got a good process in place, and I have an open mind. I think the President's Council will, too, as to what we can implement. Okay. We'll raise it back up a little bit. And at the possibility of making fun of me, the word I couldn't read was raises. Um, so are raises possible in the near future? Wow, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, we, want, we want there to be raises. There's just no doubt about that. And that's something we continue to talk about, uh, continue to look at the numbers. Uh, with the, the loss of a million dollars as we started the year with $2 million shortfall on the revenue that, that we, below what last year's number was, makes it a very, very difficult uh, situation. What we've tried to do is we've worked with the legislature on fixing the salary increase that they put in place last year where they omitted a whole group of state employees. Really pushed pretty hard with some folks in critical positions to try to make that happen. Right now, that's probably our best play, and we'll continue to have those conversations on that, but uh, we don't feel good about that. I mean, I'll just tell you, that is not something we feel good about at all because we know with health insurance premiums going up and salary increases not available for most of our employees, you're losing ground. We get that, and we don't like that. Okay, that's all I've got for you. Seriously, we got all the well, questions. Well, I, I can manufacture one more. Um, no, I think we're... Uh, no. Who's your favorite uh, former, Chiefs, former long Chiefs. snapper? Long snapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I struggle. This is not something you need to think about. Is it? <laughs> hey, I got a question for you. Oh. <laughs> it's number 83, Kendall Gammon. Yes. Right. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just saying. No. So... <clears throat> Listen to this. How many times does the ball spin in order to be in the right location so that there are laces out? Laces out. Yeah. Laces out. How many? 
Uh, this is part of my talk that I, I give it a ball away with, so you guys will be ineligible if you hear some things. But three and a half times, three it rotates times. exactly three and a half times, and uh, and then it's caught. It's yeah, it was placed. a slow day. I was yeah. trying to figure things out. So yeah, facilitate. But that that you know that's interesting though. It, the lace is out. It's, it's about facilitating success, and really, you could draw that to Pittsburgh State. To me, Pittsburgh State facilitates success for anyone and everyone whenever they can. So, and that shows you it's all about the detail too. Drive yes. drilling down all the way to the detail, how right. to make it work, and how to be right at the top. And mm -hmm. I'd say if you're in a Super Bowl, you're right at the top. You're at the top of our list. Thank you very Thank much you. for being here. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thank you.